Last night, fans of America's pastime were treated to a true offensive shootout. Who needs Chris Davis, Robbie Cano, and Bryce Harper when you have all-stars like Senator Kirsten Gillibrand and Senator Kelly Ayotte? It was the annual softball game between the women of Congress and the bad news babes of D.C. media. Let's go to the videotape. We saw leads, seesaw, back and forth, offensive fireworks lit up the beltway as both teams pounded out hits and managed to flash a little leather too. Nice. And it looked like there'd finally be a bipartisan victory in D.C. until the sixth inning when the wheels came off. The journalist team went for six runs, seizing the lead and never looking back. It was the fifth year for the annual softball showdown. And they raised $125,000 for young women diagnosed with breast cancer. Good stuff there, an amazing contribution. But could this cleated collaborative also get Congress to finally dig into the issues? To help us answer that question, let's bring in Pamela Reichman, author of Stiletto Network, Inside the Women's Power Circles That Are Changing the Face of Business. She covered the action last night for us. Pamela, I want to challenge the premise a little bit here because I don't think the problem in D.C. is colloquialism and knowing each other. It's that there are people at home who look at the other side as evil and tell them, do not compromise. And so they send them to Washington <laughs> to not compromise but to fight. And all the games in the world aren't exactly going to change that. I hear you, and this this game is known for its trash talk, but it is bringing a spirit of civility to Washington, D.C. The women on this field say that the strong personal ties that they have built over time by playing this game have built ties that are translating into politics as well. They say they are easing antagonism on the Hill, that they are easing gridlock, and that they are even shaking up the old boys club of both press and politics in Washington. So these women are really working together. If you look at the men's game, the men's game pits Republicans versus Democrats. It's almost all men, and it's along party lines. But the women's game was always built to be bipartisan. It was created by Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the, Republic, the Democrat rather from Florida, and Joanne Emerson, her Democratic, uh, her Republican um, counterpart from Missouri five years ago, to bring women together. And these women spend a lot of time mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. They get up every morning. They start practicing practice two to three times a week at 6 30 to 7 30 in the morning and yeah they, and, and on that point for practice yeah. I can attest to that because they wanted me to coach last year and I couldn't make the practices because <laughs> they were so early I couldn't get up that early but my How early were they, Dorp, Luke? Luke. time were they like 6 30 a.m. like 9 a.m. no 6 <laughs> a little early for you 9 a.m. 30 a.m. Yeah. 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 check on that I have a question to you question to you regarding this one you bring up an interesting point which is covering Capitol Hill one of the things you hear a lot of the older members lament about is that no one lives in D.C. anymore. They parachute in and they get out. They don't develop family connections. The kids don't play together. They don't know each other as people. But this game allows folks to get to know each other. I want to bring up a point, though, that I often hear on the Hill is that if women were in charge and women ran the show, women sort of are a lot more cohesive than men. They come together to figure out a better way forward. They're more pragmatic. Do you agree with that premise? Could Capitol Hill function better if it was run entirely by women? I think if anyone, male or female, got together to build those strong personal ties, there would absolutely be a better functioning government. And if you talk to these women, Debbie Wasserman Schultz said that by working with Joanne Emerson, she was able to push forth the Virginia Graham Baker Pool and Sa uh, Spa Safety Act in 2007. These women had a relationship, and Debbie said that she would never have been able to get funding for this act had it not been Joanne. Mm -hmm. There's a great example of these women working together. Another great example is they are honorary co-chairs of the Global Women's Innovation Network together. They have worked together there to bring together business executives, people in policy, and academics to talk about issues of mm. women in technology. They're working together. When Joanne <laughs> retired, Debbie brought in Martha Roby, a Republican from Alabama. These women are working together mm. in every way. Well, and Pamela, let's just say it was a big win for the good guys last night, press corps. Woohoo! Yay, press team, tonight. the bad news and babes. <laughs> There you go. Bad but news why do you think it's important, particularly, for women to spend time together 
in social settings, in networking situations, off the hill, out of a work environment. When I talked to Debbie Wasserman Schultz about this, she said that finally the women are able in that social environment to act like girlfriends. When they go home to their constituents, sure, in Washington they're pit bulls, but when they go home, they have friends who are both Democrats and Republicans. And on that field, they have friends who are both Democrats and Republicans. They're putting aside the division and strife of their day, and they're playing together as a team. That will only move them forward in politics. That will allow them to play as a team in their work lives as well. Let's move someone ahead in their work life right now. Who was the MVP of the game? The MVP was Amy Walter, the co-captain of the press team. I like it. What, she uh, was fantastic. She, she is the national editor of the Cook Political Report, and she hit the ball out of the park in many ways. And what did she do to get that MVP trophy? Well, she had a number of runs batted in. She had some terrific hits. I'm not a sports reporter, so I'm you not the best. You sound like one. Yeah, you but are she, right uh, now. she was really impressive. Those RBIs <laughs> that run batted in. Though, impressive. Huh? Also, Thanks, are you, Anna. Pamela? Thank you very much much for your time. Amy Thank Walter, you very much. MVP. The women who played in last night's game helped raise, as we said, $125,000 for the Young Survival <laughs> Coalition, which supports women with breast cancer not too shabby. You heard Luke talk about it, but do you think more would be accomplished if women ran Congress? Yes. <laughs> Amy Burroughs Dempsey says that would be a strong absolutely. You are absolutely correct. Like us on the Facebook where you'll find a link to more photos from last night's game. We'll be back with a look back. Next. It starts with little things, tiny changes in the brain. Little things.